Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you all are doing good. So today we're going to continue the Forex series and talk about building a simple EA. So if you are enjoying this video, please ensure you subscribe and leave a thumbs up for me. Thanks. So let's get into it. So I've created a new EA called Simple EA. If you don't know how to create an EA, please watch my previous video. All right, guys, so let's get started. Um, so we're going to just build a simple EA to open trades for us. And that's basically it. Um, so let's just take off some few things we don't need. So in your EA, the first things you need are inputs because you need to tell your EA what to do, how to instruct it, and you could optimize those parameters in case you are doing some back testing. Um, so yeah, so let's add some inputs to this. So if you want to add an input, the first thing you need to do is you know type inputs, then give it the data type, whether it's a string or a double or an integer. You can write that in. So today we're going to do a lot size. So let's give that a double and call it lot size. And then ensure you put your semicolons because it won't compile. So yeah, so once you're done with that, click the compile and it will generate your code for you. So let's go back to the simple EA selected. Then if you go to inputs, you could see the variable there, lot size. And it has a value, which is a double, which is basically a decimal variable. So another cool thing about the EAs is you could add a comment. So this comment would give it like a more a more visual happy name, basically. So if I compile this now and go back, you could see it changes to lot size, which you know it looks better. So yeah, that's something to take note of if you want to just do it like that. So yeah, so we have lot size there, and we could pass that, we could pass any value we wanted to it, and all of that. So you could also do on your init. Remember, I said on init is where you can have some checks to ensure that maybe the variables passed are, are properly in the right. So assuming you have a filter, or assuming you have a limit to the main and the max variables, you could add that here. So yeah, so let's add some checks. So assuming I said I wanted if the lot size is greater than two hundred, we want to return an error. I want to return a parameter not allowed kind of error. So we could return init parameters incorrect. So let's compile this. So, so if you go to our inputs, let's say I put in like 500 and start. It's going to instantly stop. Then if you go to your strategy tester, you would see the error. So the tester stopped because an init reports incorrect input parameters. So yeah, so you have that error right there. So that's pretty much where you could do your input checks to ensure that it matches the EA you're trying to build. All right, so let's take this off. So what are we trying to do today? We just want to create a, let's say a buy position based off the lot size that you put in. So that's simple, straightforward, nothing too granular, nothing too stressful. When you want to start creating orders, you need to import an include. So the include you need to add to your MQL5 is the trade include. So this is trade MQ page. All right, so you need this package where you want to, you know, create orders. All right, so what we then need to do after importing the include class is to create a variable for the C trade class, like trade. So once that's done, you can then do trade dot. I'm trying to get the trying to get the helpers to work. Uh, so trade dot yeah position open. So this takes in some parameters that you need. So first parameter is a symbol. So you could give it any symbol as a string, or you could use the um, global helper function underscore symbol. So this underscore symbol, what this does is any chart you put your EA on is going to use that symbol. So that's basically what this does. So you don't need to worry about what symbol I'm on. You could just use this global variable and it helps you out. 
So next thing we need to do is to tell it what to use. So whether it's in a buy, a buy limit, a buy stop, and whatnot. So a buy means you just want to enter the market straight up. And you also have your limit orders. You have a sell and your sell limit orders. So we're doing a buy. Next variable is the volume. So we could use the lot size that we're passed in, since it's an input. Let's put that in. So then we have the price, we put 0.0. .0. Stop loss, if you don't want to use anything, put 0.0. .0. TP, if you don't use anything, put 0.0. .0. And then your comments, you could just leave it as, you don't need to put anything because the default is no, so you could just leave that. So let's compile and yeah, that's pretty much done. So let's then test. Uh, let me reduce the speed of this uh, test. So let's give it like 20 lots. And let's put like 10K USD and give it a leverage of one to 500. And let's start. All right, so let's speed it up a bit. So we could see he created about three orders straight out the box. And that's pretty much what we wanted to do, but yeah. So we can optimize this a bit, uh, let me stop it. So to fix the multiple trades getting opened, uh, what we could do is to add a global variable. So we could have a bull trade opened equals to false. So I'm making it global because we don't want to add it as a local variable because it's always going to, you know, set it as, set it over and over again. But if it's global, it's only going to be set once. So we could then just do a check that says if trade, sorry, if trade opened is false, we can then, you know, open a trade and then we could set trade open to true. All right. So let's compile this. All right, so let's run it again. So we can see we got an error saying the market was closed. So we can get errors like this because on tick happens every time, even when the market is closed sometimes. Ideally it shouldn't, but sometimes it does. So let's fix this error. So one thing we can do is to Instead of setting trade open to true, we can do something that says get the last um, the last code from the trade. Uh, let me get to south west code. Yeah. So this will give you like a an integer or rather an enum integer that will tell you if the code was able to if the position was able to open successfully. So if you need more information about this, you can always do a search in documentation and that will give you like more information about how this method works and every other thing you need to know. So yeah, so let's do this code. Then we could have an if code is not equal to trade. So these are all enums, red code, done, meaning if we didn't, didn't get a successful response from, create, from opening this position. We can then do something here. Um, ideally you could print or try an error or whatever, but let's say, let's do the opposite way. If it's equals to done, meaning that we're successfully able to open the trade, we could then set trade open to true. So let's format this, compile this, and let's retest. All right, so yeah, we got one position open for a buy of 20 lots, which is the impulse we passed. And that's pretty much it. So that works successfully. So we could do other things, you know, you could send in the um, take profit, the stop loss, but we'll get into that much later. But this is just a basic idea of how to open trades in the market based off your symbol, your the type of trade you want to open, whether it's a buy trade or a sell trade. 
on the uh, what was it called? You could also do like a buy limit or a sell limit and all of that. Now your lot size, then your all of this again. Your price, okay. This will mostly be used if you are doing limit orders. Then your take profit and stop loss, yeah. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. Hit that thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.